Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the painting studio. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I appreciate uh, the visit. And if it's the first time here, I hope you'll find resources on this YouTube channel, free resources that will help you get started or improve uh, your wildfowl carving or decoy carving. Uh, it, I'm showing one way to do things. There are many, many approaches that are good approaches, but I thought by sharing what I do, uh, others may benefit from that and uh, share in the joy of creating wildfowl carvings and decoy carvings. Uh, something that to show for your efforts. It's a great hobby in retirement for me. Uh, keeps me active. I love waterfowl. Uh, since I was a little kid, and I still love waterfowl like I'm a little kid, 67 years old and still enjoying it. So I'm hoping to share that with others. Uh, free resources. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, maybe this is the first time you're visiting, check out the videos. And if you're getting value out of those, please hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. And, uh, it does help me out as I continue to build this channel for decoy and wildfowl carvers. Okay, on to the video. Today's video is going to be the way that I paint a Drake Pintail's head. This is actually excerpts from a much longer video that is available for sale on my website at tomchristieart.com that will show you how to paint this Pintail Drake from start to finish. But in this video, which I'm providing free on my YouTube channel, it'll give you a start on how to do the head of a pintail drake, at least one approach. And uh, hopefully that will be helpful to you. So let's get right into it. The base coat mix I use uh, looks like this. It's a little uh, like toothpaste consistency, but it's made of 90% uh, Liquitex heavy body acrylic. This is burnt umber. Maybe 10% Liquitex gesso. And then I tint that a little bit by adding some carbon black to get this kind of neutral gray color. And we're going to paint that on the bird and use sponges, uh, just a synthetic packing sponge that you can get uh, in packing material. There's nothing special about these but they work well. I like a nice closed celled sponge so the texture is very fine. All right, I'm gonna use, a, this is about a one inch wide chisel shaped brush. And I'm not going to texture the bill. I wanna leave it nice and smooth. So we'll start on the face and I'm just laying in, I'm painting right over the eyes, just putting material on the decoy begin with. So I'm putting a little material on the palette here and then I'm working that into the sponge by dabbing it up and down in the material until it's pretty consistently throughout the sponge and then I'm going to go to the decoy and go over the entire decoy like this just working this fine texture into the surface. I'm going to paint the head Chisania Burnt Umber base coat. Now I'm going to use some carbon black on a little filbert shaped scrubber and just use that right behind the white marking here and then I'm using a scrubber so that I can kind of blend into the gray below and the brown head above. And I'm just lightening the pressure as I get close to the gray so that the texture is just picking up a little bit of the black. Now I'm using that little filbert to just go ahead and block in the white up front, including these markings on the side. All right, I want to create this highlight on the face, on the side of the crown, and on the cheeks. 
and I'm <clears throat> I've got a little filbert that's kind of worn and seen some service and I'm mixing that with burr on burr smoked pearl and a touch of raw sienna to give us this lighter value and then I'm scrubbing that on the cheek pretty wet to begin with and up the side of the head and I've put this guideline in place where we're gonna have this kind of raw sienna markings up there this takes some time to get a nice soft blend so I'm just speeding up the video so you can kind of watch the sequence uh, but we'll take less time this way I'm blending down and leaving the uh, underside of the neck dark so blending into that with a nice soft transition into the dark below. You could also do these blends with your airbrush. I'm just choosing to use a brush. Now I've got raw sienna on a little scrubber and I'm just scrubbing along this line to create a soft kind of golden value up there and we'll put some detail through that later. Now I've got a small scrubber and a little of that highlighting mocha color and I'm using it to just uh, put some little feather markings on the top of the head. It's a little arcs. I'll continue that and kind of fade those out as I go to the back of the head here. Now I'm using a little carbon black with burn umber and just pulling some splits through those feathers just to break them up a little bit. All right, I used a little chroma violet interference to put that purple iridescence right by the stripe. And now I'm using the same brush washed out with a little bit of the yellow green and green mixed interference chroma and just lightly scrubbing that on so we have a nice transition between the two colors. This needs to be pretty subtle, but just a little bit back there behind the eye. Okay, I'm using a detail brush and a slightly darker value than the highlight on the cheek. So that's burnt umber with a touch of smoked pearl less smoke pearl on these and I'm going in and putting some ticks to put some feather structure in the head here. You can see I'm pulling some ticks through that uh, raw sienna shade up above just to break it up a bit we don't want a hard line there. It needs to be nice and soft. So I get back to the iridescent patch. This is very fine. So I'm going to a little sharper brush and making the uh, tick marks less obvious and just more like flow lines through that area. That area has a tendency to be very smooth so we want to keep it that way. Now down below, I'm going to use a darker value, just pure burnt umber, and come up from the, uh, stri the white stripe on the neck and pull up into the cheek, that darker value to create a nice transition between the dark there and the light cheek. And I'll do the same thing on the neck down below and the lower area of the cheek up in front. I'll continue to work on this to clean things up and just make sure it looks nice and soft. Now I'm going to use the detail brush and a little of the off-white and go in, uh, begin to create some feather markings on the white.
white. After the white is done, I'm going back with black, carbon black, and just hitting a few of these in the opposite direction. Now I'm just taking some white gesso, so a brighter white, and uh, pulling it through the off-white here to create a little depth. Gonna take a little uh, smoked pearl with burnt umber to tone it down a bit and just put a little bit of a light marking as a lid under the eye here and then go back with a little more intense smoke pearl and I'm putting a few textured dots under the eye just to give it a little character. I got a little on the eye itself but we'll take care of that. For the bill, I'm painting on a, a mix of cobalt blue, white gesso, a touch of carbon black, and a touch, touch of raw umber for this kind of slate blue look. Now I'm gonna take carbon black and uh, just paint in the black markings. This starts up high, dips down to the nostril, and then continues on out to the nail. So I'll get this painted and then we'll come back and take a look at the shapes before we move on to other things. Then I'm going to use a little scrubber oh, the, just to cover the areas. The saddle up here goes right to the head, kind of touches the nail. These return on the sides, and then there's a black marking that kind of drops straight down and doesn't curl back much to form this little blue hook up here. And now I'm going to uh, take my scrubber, like we did in other areas, and very gently scrub across this line and uh, Got to take some water out of the scrubber. If it's too wet, it's not going to blend nicely. But I want to soften this line between the blue and the black by just scrubbing along here back and forth. And then I'm going to hit all of those areas between the black and blue to just kind of soften the line between the two. I'll hit this area close to the cheek and also the one the markings out on the nail. One last little detail I mixed up with gold oxide, white, and a little raw umber to darken it. A little flesh color in the corner there between the upper and lower mandibles on both sides. It just adds a little bit of life. All right, there you have it. Easy peasy, right? It, uh, the video editing makes it look a lot easier than it is. It takes a lot more time than this 15-minute uh, video to paint the head of a pintail drake, but I tried to put in there things uh, that would help you step by step through the process. It's not easy, but repetition makes it easier, and you get faster the more you do. So uh, just a reminder, I do have uh, that full video for sale on my website and I sell those, that's at tomchristiart.com. I sell those because they take a lot of time and effort to put together to edit and get it in a 50 minute, 5-0 minute format 
that will take you from beginning to end on how to paint a decoy. And I have, I think, 16 different uh, birds over there now available. So check those out if you're interested in uh, investing in a video to show you beginning to end. But hopefully this video has been helpful, shows you one way to get a pintail started. And until next time, this is Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to you, good painting to you, and thanks for checking out my channel again.